Greetings, wicked peoples. Fishy22.8 here, and today we'll be covering the first issue of Transformers 84, otherwise known as Transformers Secrets and Lies. Hey, secrets and lies? My stock and trade. Everyone knows about Cybertron. Metal planet flown clear off orbit, sent careening through deep space, big civil war. Autobots over here, Decepticons over there. Neutrals perched precariously in the middle. But, there's other stuff you don't know. Secrets? As Optimus Prime stands in front of a nearly completed Autobot shuttle. The issue is not Cybertron. Yes, our course, if unchecked, will take us deep into the Stella Centera, the Graveyard of Stars and inevitably a catastrophic impact for some part of its boundless debris field. But Cybertron is doomed regardless. The real issue is Megatron. As we are then shown who Optimus Prime is speaking to. We disagree, Optimus Prime. Safeguarding our world is of paramount importance. With respect, Counselor Trakion, thus far we have failed quite spectacularly to deal with Megatron. We shall deal with the upstart Megatron thereafter. Just now, another city-state, Stadix, fell to his marauding forces. It's not simply his power which is considerable. It's the wantonness which he wields it. Besides, it is the opinion of several esteemed astrophysicists that controlled detonations of sufficient magnitude will slow Cybertron enough for it to be caught in the gravitational pull of this star, Ursa Major. As Optimus Prime wraps up his little speech, the counselor asks a very serious question. Then why in Primus's name are we still pouring precious resources into the construction of the Ark? The mighty Autobot leader looks away from the counselor and lies. As we cut to Stranningham Castle, Earth, 900 or so years ago, 1017 by their reckoning. What's it got to do with a war millions of light years away? Well, it's fair to say that Earth was not unlike Cybertron, in that there were perpetual power plays. In this case, Vikings, attacking from strongholds in northern France, intent on seizing the English throne from another Viking, Canute. Then this, as a small Cybertronian shuttle crash lands in the hills nearby. The Autobot jump starters, Cloud Raker and Fastlane, climb out of their crashed shuttle. As they climb out, Fastlane asks Cloud Raker what happened. Cloudraker informs him that the atmospheric conditions that threw off our shuttle are also messing with our sensors. As Fast Lane transforms, he responds with, eh, any landing you walk away from is a good one. As Cloudraker takes flight, he responds with, if the Ark's here, we'll find it. And as they take off, they are being watched by the Decepticon, Counterpunch. Back on Cybertron, Optimus Prime's hand-picked crew of Autobots now lay their optics upon the shuttle, known as the Ark. Bumblebee is impressed by its immense size, as Bumblebee comments that he hasn't seen anything this size since the era of the Titans. Sunstreaker says everything is big to you, Bumblebee. Oh, right, Sunstreaker. Tell me you didn't sign up because no one's done this before. Admit it. Hey, I heard the magic words covert and mission. So here I am. Blue Streak comments about how he needed a change of scenery. Yeah, Blue Streak, away from the fighting you realize. This is an extremely hazardous and critical mission, not some sightseeing jaunt to the stars. Sure, Prowl, but we're pioneers blazing a trail. Who knows what adventures lie ahead? The optimistic little yellow bot tells the security officer as Optimus Prime stares at his warriors. His attention is grabbed by Ultra Magnus. I used to wonder, Optimus, 
why you chose to wear the visor. Now I know. Oh? It covers a multitude of misgivings. Ultra Magnus, old friend, if something were to happen... If I didn't know better, Optimus... I trust you. Cybertron's greatest warrior would pick up the standard. I'd swear you weren't planning on coming back. Elsewhere on Cybertron... You have done well. The existence of Project Ark has been corroborated by Ravage. As Megatron is addressing Counterpunch, Shockwave, Starscream, and Soundwave. Once again, Counterpunch, you have proven your worth as a deep cover agent of the Decepticons. When Prime's Autobots have completely exhausted themselves clearing a path through the asteroid field, we shall indeed strike. Back on Earth, at Stranningham Castle, Knut sends out riders to investigate the falling star the day before. His riders are watched by their mortal enemy, but both are being watched by the Decepticons. Any clue what's going on? What's what? Who's who? No, I don't care. Local animals scrapping for turf beneath our attention. I'm much more interested, Ringspan, in what, if anything, those Autobots find. We're mirroring their global search vector by vector battle trap, so we'll know the moment they do. At which point, bam! Usefulness at it is. Meantime, I'm gonna flex my wings. All contemplating my fuel intake and no mayhem makes flywheels a dull bot. As Counterpunch comments that this terrain is built to be driven on, he transforms and takes off as well. Wingspan tells Battletrap that he's got this. Crunching data is the only juice he needs. Meanwhile, the human riders have discovered the Autobot crashed shuttle, and as they are investigating, they are ambushed by their opponents. The two Autobots are hidden out of sight, but with a clear view line to their ship, watching the humans fight amongst each other. They debate amongst themselves about how regulations are clear we do not interfere. But if we were to pick a side, it'd be the underdog, right? Come back, confirmed. What? Seriously? We've tracked this pair of losers across six systems and 19 planets? And they'd hit it lucky, here? Wait till I tell the others. He doesn't finish his thought as a blaster is put to the back of his head. Sorry, but I can't allow that. The two Autobots scurry out from their hiding place and do interfere with the human scuffle. The oppressors run off, and as Knut's men start to think that yes, there is devilly afoot, they realize we'd be fools not to take this opportunity to counterattack. Back on Cybertron, many cycles ago, when you said out of the way, you meant it. I have found Counterpunch. The Badlands carry a built-in deterrent, a useful rendezvous point. As Counterpunch transforms from vehicle mode and stands in front of Optimus Prime. I guess so. Now excuse me, while I slip into something more principled. As he transforms yet again into the Autobot spy, Punch. You have news, Punch? I do. The bait has been taken. As Optimus Prime's hand-picked crew are sitting aboard the Ark, listening to the countdown, they are wondering where Optimus is. Sounds right. You gotta learn to trust the big bot. When he says something, you can stake your life on it. The strongest Autobot Brawn reassures Bumblebee. Still in the Badlands, Punch asks Optimus, What I don't get is why it's like... After all you have done and sacrificed for the cause, Punch. You want Megatron to attack the Ark. I must ask you to undertake a further tour of deep cover duty. Whoever did this is going to pay. Those two Autobots, gotta be. Must have rumbled us up and caught Ringspan napping. Like I said, they're gonna pay. Counterpunch? Flywheels? Let's get medieval on their ass. The two Autobot jump starters are sitting there watching the humans retreat, chuckling that they've been called worse than abominations before, when out of nowhere a massive explosion throws them from their feet. 
as the tailing Decepticons finally make their presence known with a small, full-on assault of the two Autobots. Heads up, Autobots. It's scrapping time. We'll make it short and sweet. For us, anyway. And downright excruciating for you. We then cut to the Autobot Park, finally taking off, leaving Cybertron. As the Autobots destroy the debris field near their shuttle, the Decepticons breach the hull and attack. As Optimus Prime presses a button on the console, he says, Though we die, our enemies are taken with us. As the Duocon charges towards Jumpstarter, Cloudraker makes a pun with his gravity rifle, only to be hit directly with a missile. Fastlane picks up his fellow Jumpstarter and carries him back to the shuttle. As they take off, Counterpunch takes aim and says, Forgive me, as he opens fire upon his fellow Autobots to ensure that the rest of the Autobots on Earth are never foul. The small shuttle crashes into the castle, taking down one of its walls. We flash back to Optimus's and Punch's meeting in the Badlands. We must never be foul. I need you or rather your alter ego, to make sure of it. Whatever it takes. Megatron's evil cannot ever be allowed to blight this universe again. So many of your finest warriors. Why? He would know. Anything less than total commitment, Megatron would sniff out the lie, see the trap. They will be remembered. The needs of the many. Exactly. Cybertron will have a fighting chance. And you? I... I must try to live with what I have done, Punch. The trust that I have abused. Secrets and lies. My friend, war is a dirty business, and no one, but no one, comes out clean. And that was the first issue of Transformers 84, otherwise known as Transformers Secrets and Lies. I really do enjoy how this issue paints Optimus Prime trying to do the right thing, but knowing he has to commit this horrible act in order to stop something much more horrible. The Netflix trilogy kind of did something similar, but it wasn't handled as well in my opinion. This handles it a little bit better. Now, the way they got this series numbered is kind of weird. This issue is number zero, which means the second issue in this series is technically issue one. So, I'll be recording that one here very shortly. And, and as I said before, if you want to experience everything inside this comic, that I've glossed over in this dub, please go out and buy your own physical or digital copy of the comic and enjoy all the awesome stuff in it. There's a lot of awesome alternate covers for several issues in the back of it that I'm not going to show you, because I want you to go out and support it yourself. And as always, this is Fishy22.8, logging off. Thank you, wicked peoples.